In this video, we are talking about the five top tips of getting started on a ketogenic diet. We're starting right now. Number one. Tip number one. Hydrate. Like most diets, it's super important to hydrate, but especially so on a ketogenic diet because we are keeping our insulin levels low. Your body is not producing as much insulin because we are carb restricting and we are depleting our glycogen stores. In return, our kidneys go from retaining fluid to excreting more of it. And that's why in the beginning of your ketogenic uh, diet or your ketogenic lifestyle is when we tend to lose a lot of that bloat in the beginning because we're losing a lot of that retention, a lot of that water weight. So the bad part about this is we're losing our uh, electrolytes, so you're losing more electrolytes. So your magnesium, your potassium, your calcium, and your sodium. So what do we do to help prevent the keto flu because we're losing these electrolytes is you need to salt your foods. I use Himalayan sea salt or Celtic sea salt is a great way um, to get in some of those electrolytes. You can supplement with magnesium, make sure you're getting that in your multivitamin. Uh, potassium, I mean avocados are huge potassium, high in good fats and very high in potassium, even more so than a banana and you can't have bananas on this diet because the carbs are too high. But Avocados are a great way, or a great source, of getting in a lot of potassium and, and good fats. Drinking um, bone broth, or like you know, chicken broth, beef broth, stuff like that is really good. The bone broth, I've only tried one and it wasn't my favorite, but you know, uh, chicken broth is good. That's a good way to get some sodium, some salts into your, into your diet for the day. Um, leafy green vegetables are very high in potassium. You know, there's a lot of great micronutrients, so get in your leafy greens, that is uh, definitely important. Getting your calcium in, you can get that from fish, we like salmon, um, all different types of fish, you can get a lot of calcium out of that, obviously dairy, so your cheeses, your milks, um, actually no, don't have milk, but almond milk you can do if you can, I'm allergic so I can't have coconut milk or almond milk, but those are really good choices for getting in your calcium, and you know, there's some good fats in there as well. You can take a calcium supplement or with your multivitamin, but you want to make sure that there is plenty of vitamin D in your multivitamin or your calcium supplement. So just to kind of recap with the supplements that you can take, you know, calcium, take your multivitamins, take a magnesium. The magnesium one that I take is 500 milligrams, good for muscle and bone support, but it's also, you know, going to help you with replacing those electrolytes. Uh, you can salt your foods again. Um, and you know, you the little meal squirt stuff, you can use that from time to time. I use the electrolyte one just to, to help get in. There's only, you're only gonna get a little bit of, of uh, electrolytes from that kind of thing, and you don't wanna become dependent on it. I, I would recommend even just sprinkling some sea salt into your water, just a little bit, and uh, it makes, it tastes pretty good. And you can put some lemon in there as well. Tip number two. Eat more fat. Yes, I made this mistake in the very beginning, and maybe you will too, but hopefully watching this, you won't. I was still cutting the carbs and I was still having great success by cutting the carbs, but I was not eating enough fat. It is crucial to get those fats in. In the beginning, like I said, I was eating low carb and I was having good success, but I was so used to eating lean protein and a lot of it. Problem with that is if you eat too much protein, it still is gonna spike your insulin and it's not gonna get you fat adapted. It's not gonna get you into ketosis. So you want to up those fats, you wanna eat that moderate protein and lower the carbs. So the percentages, 70%, you know, shoot for that, 70% fat, 25% protein, and six, I'm sorry, 5% carb. So what helps in getting those fats up? Fattier cuts of meat, cooking with butter, I recommend a nice organic butter. Uh, Kerrygold butter tastes amazing, we use that. Also, you can add heavy whipping cream to your coffee. I tend to do two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream to my coffee later in the day. Also, one tablespoon of butter. That gives me a good 20 grams of good fats. You wanna cook with olive oil, you know, cook with your butter. Fattier cuts of meat, like I said. Some fattier cuts of meat examples are salmon, chicken thighs or chicken drumsticks, chicken wings, uh, pork, pork chops are good. Pork tenderloin is really actually pretty lean. Uh, my wife really likes that, so a lot of times we will use that. You can add cheese just to up the fats or make like a cheese sauce with it. You can check out my recipes. I have a bunch on ketogenic friendly recipes. 
Again, shoot for that ballpark. 70% fat, 25% protein, 5% carb, and that will get you into ketosis, that'll get you fat adapted, and you will shred the fat. And that brings me to my third tip. Three. Tip number three. If you are not tracking, you are slacking. Now listen, I know not everybody wants to track, but trust me, within the first two weeks, you should definitely be tracking, at least to get more of a feel of what it's like to be hitting those percentages that I talk about. You really wanna hit those percentages. Then you can like relax a little bit and chill out and you know, slack a little bit. You know, sometimes I'll take the weekend and I won't track anything. I will just use my intuition and I know that I'm getting in those fats and I know I'm keeping things low carb and all will be good, but you wanna keep yourself accountable. So every now and again, if you're not tracking, every now and again you want to track and check out things because there's things that you're gonna find out that you're thinking are low carb, but they're really not. Or they might be moderate protein, you're thinking, but they're high protein. Or you may be thinking, oh, this is loaded with fat, but then there's a lot of tag along carbs that you didn't realize were in there. And those things add up over time. So keep yourself in check, keep yourself accountable, yourself accountable. If you're not tracking, you're slacking. Don't take offense to that. Do not worry so much about those calories because eating keto is very satiating. You're not gonna be as hungry. That being said, don't eat too little either. You wanna make sure you're eating. Listen to your body. This is the one diet where you can actually listen to your body, you can feel full, stop eating. You don't have to worry so much about those calories. Get those fats in, keep the fats up, keep the carbs low, all is good to go. I have days where I eat less, I have days where I eat more, but all done and said, I still will notice when I'm keeping things strict keto and I'm not cheating, I notice those inches will fall off. I sometimes might not notice my weight so much, but that's because you're retaining muscle with the ketogenic diet. So I will notice the scale won't drop sometimes, but I do notice, oh, I went up in a pant uh, buckle. My buckle went up a notch, so I got to, you know, then I notice those inches. Or you can measure your waist and stuff like that. That's a great way of tracking. Don't worry so much about that weight scale. It's all good. Above all, once you're keto adapted, the cognitive benefits of the ketogenic diet are amazing. You will feel so good once you are keto adapted. So stick to the keto and you will not regret it. I promise you that. So again, tip number three, if you're not tracking, you're slacking. Track your stuff, guys. I highly encourage you to. It keeps you accountable, keeps you in check. Hit those percentages as close as you can. Again, it's a ballpark figure. Don't stress out about it if you're not hitting 70% fat, 25% uh, protein, 5% carb. At the end of the day, feel good. That's what the ketogenic diet's all about. You know, dropping some weight, feeling good, losing inches, getting ripped, getting shredded, if that's your goal. What are your goals? And these tips are gonna help you get there. I promise you that. Tip number four. Number four, eat the foods you like. Yes, on this you get to eat bacon, you get to eat sausage, you get to eat my favorite chicken wings, and you get to eat butter cooked with olive oil. Butter, did I mention butter? Bacon? Oh my God, it's so good. You no longer have to worry so much about calories. You don't have to count points. You don't have to worry about being starving all the time. You don't get so hangry on this diet. It's very satiating. Here's the thing, if you don't like to eat bacon. What? Yeah, if you don't like to eat bacon or you don't like sausage or you don't like you know, some of these fattier foods, then don't eat them. Choose the foods that you like. There's always an option. I'm allergic to peanuts, I'm allergic to coconuts, I'm allergic to chocolate, I'm allergic to a lot of things. I never thought in a million years the keto diet would be for me because I see all these people eating, you know, nuts are a great fat source. They're an awesome, um, you know, food to eat when you're on this diet. However, I'm allergic so I can't. I have found alternatives no problem. I can have sunflower seeds, so I add those into my diet. Um, you know, chocolate, yeah, you can't have the sugar, but you can use the cocoa powder for when you're, when you're baking. If you can have almonds and nuts, there's almond flour, there's coconut flour, so you can use that for baking. There's always gonna be an option. 
So you're not going to be depriving yourself, okay? Even though we're cutting low carb, we're keeping those carbs low and we're getting rid of sugars, there are alternatives. What's a good way to find these alternatives? You can go on Pinterest. You can Google search keto-friendly foods. Um, I'm always making different recipes. You can check my channel for different recipes that you can cook for you and your family. You know, and even if some of your family members aren't doing keto, I promise you a lot of these foods they're going to enjoy as well. The bottom line for tip number four is eat the keto-friendly foods that you enjoy. It'll make this journey that much easier. Let's move on to tip number five. Tip number five. Tip, tip number five. Tip number five. Chillax and keep on ketoing. Look guys, cheats are gonna happen. Stress in life's gonna happen. You're gonna have those accidental carbs. You're gonna have cheat days, like I said. It's just, it's inevitable, it's gonna happen. The point is not to give up. The next day or right after, get right back on that horse and keep on going. Always remember, like they say, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Consistency wins all, every time, no matter what it is. Consistency in life, consistency in your exercise, consistency in your diet. It's what works. So listen, chillax and keep on ketoing. This is a lifestyle change. You got this. Keep on keeping on and always remember to always rock and roll.